Hey guys, this is the greatest first generation wrestler, Jay Lethal, the black machismo, the black nature boy, and you are watching Ambi. Did I get all those names right? Hey everyone, it's Alicia, and I'm so excited to be sitting here with Jay Lethal. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining me. This is such a long mic. I feel like I have to hold it <laughs> with two with hands. Two hands. <laughs> Like, hi. You just look really Thank cold you and for shy. Having me. Well, it's, it's Canada. That's true. Oh, I got to talk. I already messed up. Oh, it's Canada. No, I have to have it. I, uh, I don't like the cold weather, which is why I live in Tampa, Florida. Mm. So it was a nice coming here. And it's not just the weather. Like, these locker rooms, as soon as we walked oh, in, yeah, blasting a, with, like, it's freezing. It's an ice rink, right? So, like, the ice is technically still there, I heard. I think it's underneath. Underneath, right. So it's freezing. Um, like I said, I live in Tampa. I moved mm -hmm. there because I'll never have to shovel snow ever again. <laughs> uh, I love being warm. So I got on layers today. Yeah. But it's not that bad. It could be worse. Definitely. Yeah. Very clever. Thank you. Very welcome. Thank you. Well, layers. <laughs> that's, that's the key. Layers. <laughs> Well, aside from the weather, how does it feel to be back in Toronto for Ring of Honor War of the Worlds? Feels awesome. There's yeah. always a, a, a really cool feel when we're here. Most of the time it's because the shows are these joint shows with New Japan and guys from all over the world. Uh, CMLL is represented on our shows. Uh, this War of the Worlds thing has really become something cool and look forward to. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be back because it means War of the Worlds. Mm -hmm. And your parents have been going to your wrestling shows live for such a long time, since yes. the beginning. And they were even there when you won the ROH championship, too. They so. were. I remember for the first, like, five years of my career, every show that I had, no matter how far the drive was, my parents went. Um, I remember the first time I was ever offered to be flown out somewhere uh, was for uh, Ring of Honor. It was a Chicago show, and my parents said, no. A fly? We can't fly? Like, they only get tickets for one person? Tell them you don't want the ticket. We'll drive. I remember that. And we, I remember it was the first time I really stayed at a hotel. It was a Crown Plaza. Um, and me and my whole family crammed into this room. It was so, so much fun. That's I awesome. actually missed out for the first five years uh, of my career on those cool on-the-road wrestling stories with the boys and the wrestlers. Uh, because I was actually having my own on-the-road wrestling stories with my family, which yeah. I thought was way cooler, right? <laughs> way safer, too, if you hear yeah. some of the stories. Oh, yeah, I've heard some of them. <laughs> I, can, I can agree with you on that. <laughs> and have they gotten used to kind of the, the blood aspect of it? Because I remember there was a time where you faced the Dudleys, and you were bleeding like crazy, and your parents were just in the audience like, I don't want you to ever do this wrestling thing again. <laughs> have they gotten used to that? Uh... They haven't gotten used to me bleeding, no. luckily, because, one, it doesn't happen that often. That's very true. Uh, but, yeah, I remember that. Um, my dad, I think deep down inside, he wouldn't mind it too much, although, like, he's just a concerned dad. So he would on the surface, but deep down he'd be like, yeah, this is wrestling. <laughs> my mom, not so much. Not so much. <laughs> no. uh, they've gotten used to other people bleeding. Um, my dad used to say some of the guys we'd see on the road, he'd go, oh, that guy loves to bleed. Um, uh, but my mom, she would, she would never get used to it. Luckily, they don't have to get used to me bleeding, though, because I don't do it that often. <laughs> well, something I find interesting is the fact that you don't really like setting goals for yourself because you are afraid you're going to jinx yourself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I find yeah. that so interesting because I, I, I don't ask the question, like, what are your goals in the future? But people will bring them up. Mm -hmm. And with you, you're just, you've always just been very go with the flow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just let's see what tomorrow brings. I always tell uh, some people I, I never set a goal to get to wrestle and meet Ric Flair, hang out with him in a bar. Yeah. I didn't set a goal to meet and hang out with Hulk Hogan or wrestle Kevin Nash or wrestle Kurt Angle live on pay per view or become the face of. Ring of Honor, a company known around the world for its wrestling. Those things have just happened. I got lucky. I was in the right place at the right time. I also consider this wrestling business, this wrestling journey that I've been on, it's very much like winning the lottery. Um, I just, I've gotten so lucky and fortunate to do some of the things. I'm here talking with Ambi. Um, and, you know, I didn't set the goal to do this. It just sort of happened, you know? So, yeah, I'm afraid to set a goal for myself because then it won't happen. Okay, so just keep going with the flow and cool things <laughs> are going to come Just go with your the way. flow. Just going with the flow. <laughs> Where did you buy these long handled <laughs> microphones? These are from Australia. Ah, wow. oh, okay. Oh, yeah, because we've been this doing these super loud shows. Do you know how loud this 
these venues can get, and this will block out everything. When you said these came from Australia, I was going to say that explains it, but then I'm thinking about it, I was like, what does that mean? Yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I would have questioned that right away. <laughs> so thank goodness I didn't say that. <laughs> Inadvertently, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I was just letting you know what was on well, my mind. On? Right. I like the honesty. There you go. <laughs> well, one of the best things about wrestling is how it takes you all over the place, but there's a lot of downtime with the traveling, too, and you've been breaking out the Nintendo Switch quite a bit. I have, yeah. I have. Um, I love my PlayStation. I used to be an Xbox guy, um, and I still have the Xbox, but I love my PlayStation. I'm addicted to this game called Monster Hunter World, which Jonathan Gresham actually is a fan of as well. Okay. But I don't have one of those cool travel cases for the PS4. Uh, they make these cool travel cases, but it's too bulky for me. Um, <laughs> so I need something more portable, so I got this Switch. Um, it's great, great system, great console. I'm currently playing Mario Odyssey. Um, I think that's everybody's go-to. Well, it's such a long game. Like I Is haven't it? even okay. gotten close to beating it because there's these moons that you can go around collecting. I'm addicted to going around collecting the moons, and I haven't really You're progressed not even going too far for the in my story. story. It's like yeah. when you just collect the coins. You don't really care about anything else. Right, that's right. That's how cool the game is. Right. <laughs> so yeah, that does help me uh, kill a lot of time on the road. A lot of time sitting in the hotel room that you know i used to think that i was a professional waiter not a professional wrestler because when you travel you wait for your flight you wait to get on the plane you wait to get off the plane you wait for your ride to show up you wait for the show to start you wait for your match to happen then you wait to go back to the hotel room uh and then you do it all again the next day so like it's just a day of waiting around so that nintendo switch really does help <laughs> comes in handy by. yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, it does. Well, what can you tell me about going onto Wikipedia and changing Petey Williams? Oh, my name? God. How did you find... Who told you that? <laughs> I feel like Rumpelstiltskin. Who told you that? How did you know that, I for real? No Would you, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> well, the interesting thing about that is... Uh, Sanjay, Alex Shelley, Chris Sabin, and I... We would go on <laughs> Petey's Wikipedia page and change some things... Like some things that I won't mention right now. Um, but somebody, and we swore it was Petey, but somebody, it's like their job is to go and fix anything that someone's changed, changed or altered. Changed, right, right, when it's obviously not true. <laughs> um, so I wish that that person didn't exist. Um, and if they didn't, my Wikipedia probably would say some weird things. Although, my Wikipedia does have the wrong birthday on Ooh. there. My birthday is April 29th. Uh, and Wikipedia says that it's April 21st. Now, who do you believe? I think I'm going to go with you. I think so, too. <laughs> Although everyone always wishes me a happy birthday on the 21st. Does that bug you? It does not. It, it does doesn't. not. Because at least they're trying. And That's they're true. taking an effort. It's the thought that counts, It's the right? thought that counts. They've taken the time out of their day to wish me a happy birthday, even though it's on the wrong day. Uh, <laughs> but they still took the time. So at least it's, it's like not in, like, October. Right? It's just a few days off. <laughs> right. Just a few days off. No big deal. <laughs> so why was it that Petey was your target? Is this something that you'd pull pranks on a lot of other people? Or was it just that? No, no, no. Everybody was a victim ah. of something. It just so happened that Petey was the Wikipedia victim. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody, our whole crew, we were all victims of something. What's a good one that was yeah, pulled I don't know. You? In my head, I'm trying to think of some of the things that the guys wouldn't mind sharing. But... Mm, it's so hard to find. Like, we did a lot of mean stuff to each other, too. All in good spirits. No one ever got hurt. Of course. Often. Um, <laughs> we did have... Yeah, see, I don't know if they're going to be upset with me saying some of this stuff. Ooh, I, I, like, I think we, we got this go bond. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll have to be on again. Okay. And then we'll I'll get, get the we'll, clearance. We'll have it cleared. I got to get the clearance with my boys. Round two. <laughs> <laughs> Well, of course, we know you for doing some incredible impressions. Yeah. Actually just heard some in the hallway <laughs> happening on some... <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, so aside from the classic Macho Man and the great Ric Flair that you do... You want to know where I got that skill from, actually? Not many people know this, but... Tell me. Uh, so I've always been able to do the Macho Man voice. It, it's happened for years. Um, and whenever there was downtime in the... Uh, the time tna in their locker room i would always bust the voice out but i had been able to do that voice all my life it's just i was never really comfortable doing it in front of a bunch of people um and then sanjay 
This is another thing. I'm sure he wouldn't mind us sharing this. <laughs> Sanjay and me and Alex, Shirley, Christian, we used to prank call various people. Um, a bunch of our friends mostly because random calls to people we didn't know would be kind of rude. Uh, and Sanjay had this cool Dracula voice. Um, and he would call airlines as Dracula. And he would tell them, I need to book a flight immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd say, oh, sir, where are you driving? I need to book a flight from Orlando, Florida to Transylvania. Some of them didn't get it. And they'd go, oh, that's international. Let me transfer you. <laughs> so uh, just him being able to, like, I really think that helped me so much, even though yeah. I wasn't the one doing it. Um, have, you that, pr- have you prank called in the Macho Man? N- I did call the Iron Sheik one time as the Macho Man. Sadly. Sadly? <laughs> yeah, because... Of, throughout the phone call conversation, I started to make he. I was about to say I started to make him, but he started crying, um, and it, it became this real sad thing. So it, like it starts out like this little funny story, but then if I tell you too much, then it makes me look bad. Oh, even though I didn't, that wasn't <laughs> okay. my point. That wasn't my point. Uh, but yeah, I've always been to do the Macho Man impression. <laughs> Uh, and the Ric Flair impression yeah. I found out I can do, which you probably already know because you've done your homework. <laughs> um, I found out I could do the Ric Flair impression when we did an overseas trip for Impact Wrestling. And on one of the off days, I had a little too much to drink. Um, and then the next day, everyone's giving me the woo four fingers and telling me to do what I did last night. Um, and that is how I found out I could do a Ric Flair impression. <laughs> you didn't even know. <laughs> I, had, I had no idea. And then there's someone else is like, oh, well, who else can you do? And I'm like, I don't know. Do you have any alcohol? Let's see. <laughs> I'm not even a big drinker either. That's, a, that's another thing. That's I'm, just one of the things that comes out of you. Alcohol, alcohol? loosens you up. You got to give me a woo. You know, okay, so oh. uh, some people ask which one is easier to do, mm-hmm. the Macho Man or the Ric Flair. Which one do you think? Is easier. Well, because you're asking it that way, I would have said Rick, but now I feel like you're going to say Macho's easier, just because the way that you went about asking that question. Okay. Mm. wrong? Well, it, you know what? I think it depends on what mood I'm in. Okay. No matter what mood I'm in, whether I'm extremely happy or kind of sad or just want to, like, chill, the Macho Man voice can be done no matter what mood. But the flair... It's hard to fake the Ric Flair. You got to be excited. Mm-hmm. You kind of, you got to talk a little louder and stress out the last word. Uh, so it's a little harder to do the, the Ric Flair one. But the Macho Man one, way easier. But like if I'm in a sad mood, I don't want to be going, whoa. So it's a little hard. To, it's a hard to do, you know. So I would say easiest one is the Macho Man. Although I did do the voiceovers for the video game that TNA made one time. Uh, I had to do my Macho Man voice for what seemed like three hours straight. Wow. Strained my voice. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the Macho Man voice is a little more dangerous. Mm. Yeah, what to my health. <laughs> Yeah. But I noticed before, is you did like a couple of the mannerisms. I don't even know if you noticed it. You would have like a hand <laughs> going. And I'm like, oh, he's, I think it's just in you. Yeah, it just, I have no control over it. Once I open the door and let it come out, it <laughs> takes over. Well, here on the site, we not only interview wrestlers, but also musicians. So if you could hang out with a band or an artist for a day, which would that be? Oh, man. It would prob- probably be Godsmack. I don't, okay. Yeah. Um, so here's the Interesting note. My parents had six kids. Uh, I'm somewhere in the middle. Um, I love all music. In fact, I played the saxophone. I love all different types of music. But predominantly in my house, there was R&B and rap. Um, And I I wouldn't say that I got sick of it. I just, I I really hadn't at that time been exposed to anything other than R&B and rap. And at that time, I hadn't started playing the saxophone yet. So when I got into... Middle school, when I left middle school into high school, I remember sat at the lunch table with a guy I didn't know. His name was Marco. He was sitting alone. And I didn't really have any friends there either yet. Um, Because most of my friends, my high school had three different buildings. Most of my friends were in the other buildings. I was in this building where I didn't know many people. Sat next to Marco. Marco had headphones on. And uh, he was talking. We had a little chat. Then he put his headphones on to start eating. After we were done eating, I said, hey, what are you listening to? And he goes, here, you want to hear? And he put the headphones on my head. 
Um, and I fell in love with what I heard. And later on, it wasn't until the next day I found out who I was actually listening to, and it was a band called Godsmack. And you would think... Now, I'm not a big fan of... There's a certain type of genre where they... Blah, 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 like, you know, I'm not a... Like, I love all kinds of music. I'm not the biggest fan of that. But not that there's anything wrong with that. But uh, with a name like Godsmack, you would think that that's what you would hear. But no, I... Uh, yeah, I fell in love with Godsmack. That was the first non R and B and raps uh, band or music that I've ever heard, and I bought every one of their CDs. I know all of their songs forward and back. Not gonna sing any right now, um, <laughs> but yeah, if I could hang out with and get to chat with anybody, any okay. band, it'd be Godsmack. As you were saying that story, I feel like that could be read out of a movie. Like just you know, like two friends meeting, you give right. them the head. Right. <laughs> Right, and sadly, I haven't talked to Marco in years. Um, I don't. I wonder what he's doing now. Maybe he has some really good music records. You never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure somewhere he's sitting there with headphones on, right? playing some awesome music. <laughs> I am a big fan also of uh, Jethro Tull. Oh, cool! They sing. Well, we play their song in the beginning of our show, not on TV or anything, but uh, <clears throat> Carrie Silken, the old owner of Ring of Honor, actually got me into them. And a little known fact, I have never been to a music concert before uh, until I went to a Jethro Tull concert. So I've been to three Jethro Tull concerts, the only concerts I've ever been to. Uh, that is, that is strange. Kinda, I thought you were going to say sad. No, that was no. kind of. But, um, yeah, it is strange. I don't know. I just feel like whenever I see movies or TV and they're at concerts, it's always so cramped. And like I'm like, who wants? who would enjoy that? But when you go to concerts, it's nothing like that. Like, I don't know why they do that on TV. They make it seem like it's <laughs> on. People are jumping around around me like, oh. Like, I just want to be comfortable in my own little space. And were you comfortable at Jethro Tull three I times? Was, I was. I was. I was comfortable yes. all three times. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Is there someone else you would want to see? Uh, yeah, I want to see so many people. Are there I'm a big happened? Mm, yeah, I just, you know, I just surround myself with wrestling so much that I really don't, I mean, other than going to Disney World, because I live in Florida, um, those Jethro Tull concerts that we went to just so happened to be surrounded by wrestling events. Oh, okay. So it just worked out that I was already in town for them. Um, it just... I could go to more concerts if I wanted to. I just I got a wrestling school in Tampa, so I'm always there. And when I'm not there, I'm on the road. I just I don't have enough me time. I okay. should take some more me time and go to some more concerts. You should. I think I will. Okay. Per your recommendation. Look at this. You're opening. There you go. They, my students may not like you anymore. They may <laughs> like. Oh, Jay used to be here all the time. Now he just goes yeah, to now concerts. He just goes to gigs. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're right. <laughs> To wrap things up, I do want to leave it with all of the fans. Is there anything you want to say to those who are going to be viewing? Um, thank you for watching. Um, thank you for being a fan. You know, one thing as wrestlers, we just, well, me anyway, I, every time I leave the building, I just think to myself, I hope that everybody who watched anything that I did um, got some kind of enjoyment out of it, which is tough because. My mom would always say, you can't please everybody. Just like I heard R&B and rap my whole life. I like it, but it's not my choice of music. Um, not that there's anything wrong with it, but like, you know, you just can't please everybody. It's impossible. Um, but I wish it was possible because <laughs> I wish I could just please everybody with what I did in the ring or at a show or in an interview um, so I just want to say thank you for all the people who support and follow me. And, yeah, just thank you. Nothing else. I mean, I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> I like how it's like, thanks. Oh, you're back thank with you. the two Long hands. Long microphone. The mic. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's this. I have a big head, but I don't know if it's this. Is it the size of my head? Is it big? <laughs> Um, it's actually, it's longer. Longer, so yes. Look at so you. I don't have a big head. Look at nice. You. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Thank my you for having me. pleasure. Yes, yes. Um, do you, st I, I watched some of your videos. I watched your, some of your videos you mentioned before. Oh, it was last year we saw, I saw you. Mm -hmm. That was my first time meeting you. Mm -hmm. I watched some of your videos, and you do this thing at the end, you go, 
I'm Ambi, and this is, and then you let them answer. Do you still do that? No. You don't do that. Mm-mm. Why'd you stop doing that? <laughs> I don't think I've, I don't know if I have done no, that. No, you have. You have. I'm going to sh- prove it to huh. you. Um, I just have to pull up some of your, maybe you don't say I'm Ambi. You, you say I, something, I have a rap. and you go, and this is, and you let them answer. Or maybe you've only done it for like one interview. Uh, no, I, okay. okay. All right. We're going to look this up. We're afterwards. going to. Yep. We're he, going to. He knows you want to. better than I do. Yeah. And you better, when you do this, edit it in at the end <laughs> and show <laughs> you doing it so that people don't go, Jay doesn't yeah, know what the hell he was talking a, about. This exists. Cause I'm, I don't know. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll see. Okay. All right. I'm going to do. Watch this. <laughs> Watch this. Hey, it's Alicia, and I just chatted with. Will Ospreay. The interview will be live soon. Bye. Hey everyone, it's Alicia and I just spoke with... Jay Lethal. The interview will be live soon. Hi.